I'm with uh, Ed Anderson of uh, Involve after a really interesting uh, workshop about uh, community involvement and localism. Um, Ed, show us the uh, report. So it's uh, hands up and hands on, understanding new opportunities for localism and community empowerment. Uh, it's by Liz Cole and it's uh, produced by Consumer Focus. And um, this is a, a, a joint um, report looking at the current opportunities presented by the localism bill um, for communities to do things for themselves but also have more influence. So what kind of conclusions did you come from in the report? Well it's one of the, it's one of the few pieces of work which actually has looked at uh, how well does the, the rhetoric of, of localism actually marry with, with reality? So we, we've got the community right to bid, we've got the community right to build, uh, we've got all these new, these new rights for community members to take some quite serious action in their community. But to what degree are people willing to do that? And that's what this, this report has looked at. And, you know, and it shows that there are some, some quite profound challenges in terms of an, quite a large group of people who want to be involved and influence, but perhaps fewer people who are currently ready and willing to actually go in and, and actually deliver services themselves. So in, in one sense I was thinking, well, probably there's not a lot new in this. You could probably got the same results uh, some time back, the same issues come up and so on and so forth. But it's perhaps a, an important reality check at a time when people are getting um, enthusiastic or indeed sceptical about what localism means. Well, I mean, I think that's right. There's, there's certainly a lot in here which, uh, when we, we presented this to, to a number of very um, experienced practitioners, there were a lot of nods in the room and it didn't necessarily tell people something that was widely different from reality. So it, it kind of confirms what we know. The reason why this is really important, though, is that at the current moment, this work is happening far more than it used to do. It used to be that we used to wistfully say, well, it'd be great if we actually gave communities direct decision-making power and let them run things for themselves rather than government doing it for them. But with the current cuts, we're suddenly faced with a situation where it is, it's happening, or at least, and people are pushing for it to happen. And so we need that reality check, and we need to understand what is, that make, what is it that makes some communities and community groups able to run, pro, run services for themselves and what is it that makes other communities unable or unwilling to do so? So what conclusions did you find about who is likely to be involved and, and, and how much? And perhaps what local authorities and others should do to encourage and help? Well, I mean, one of the things we found, which is, is uh, similar to what many other pieces of research has found, is this is not a short-term game. If you want communities to run services and own assets um, on a sustainable basis, then that's a capacity and an ability that has to be built over a, a longer period of time and it has a lot to do with, with confidence. And there are a lot of issues within groups that need to be dealt with. People need, we need to be very realistic when we deal with these things. Sometimes when we talk about localism uh, and these, these new community rights, we look at community, the community as if it's one thing and the community agrees. But how do you deal with this when there's a conflict? We heard a case studies here today at the workshop about use of an, a local park where the communities, the communities that use the park were deeply divided and there was conflict uh, and anger. And unless we are aware of that and we're able to deal with it, we will, people, uh, the government will create support and structures for localism which will simply exacerbate those types of conflicts. And was there one underlying theme which you think which came through which perhaps uh, connects us back to past experience of this but it's really important for councils and others to understand? Obviously it, it, it takes time. I think there was a lot about uh, trust. What was the groundswell do you think of discussion? Well trust came up um, a lot and the sense that we, we have to it's seeing is believing. If, if localism is to, to make a difference people need to see it making a difference and they need to be, that needs to be communicated really clearly to them. Um, there's also the, um, we also talked a lot about the, um, the small group of people who are very active today and the question came up about well how do we, is it, are they the usual suspects? That's a term a lot of people don't like because it, uh, it sort of places the onus of blame on, on those people. Um, and there is a real question and, some, and so, uh, we referred to it in this, this workshop, someone said well there are, it's a blessing and a curse because sometimes this small group of very active um, citizens is able to act as a, as a catalyst 
and a network and a linchpin for doing more things. And, and other times, um, they sometimes monopolize um, these these opportunities. And again, that comes back to this rather naive view of, of community as a, uh, a one, one thing. We actually have to acknowledge that in some cases these citizens are really well placed to, to do things. In other cases, we need to listen to a much broader range of voices.